Guys, there's a story getting around on 4680 Battery Reserve Production, and of course, we now know Tesla's making, they're making um, about a thousand Cybertrucks per week. But the thing is, that's not the real story here. The, the real story here is how the hell are Tesla going to manufacture 250,000 Cybertrucks next year? How are they going to improve the Cybertruck? I mean, how are they going to get their production numbers up? They need to more than triple battery cell production for that to happen. Is that logical? Well, no. Tesla don't. I don't think Tesla are going to do that for 4680 battery cells. So what battery will the Cybertruck have next year? It's going to be better, I think, than what it is today. And it will be cheaper. Now, the Cybertruck, the price is going to be $80,000 for the, the, the mainstream Cybertruck, $79,900. And it will have a completely different battery chemistry. We know this from Tesla's report that Elon Musk wrote himself, right? Their master plan. When Tesla said what the chemistry of the battery is going into the Cybertruck would actually be. It's strange to me that people have forgotten what was in the master plan because Tesla almost always follows pretty much everything that they reveal in their master plan. Guys, these numbers are, are pretty damn remarkable. It appears that Tesla is now actually manufacturing a lot more batteries itself than what people realize. No one's really talked about this very much. Tesla has in fact ramped up 4680 battery cell production to the point where I think they're going to be able to build a lot more Cybertrucks, maybe even Model Ys. Maybe they'll go back to using them in the Model Ys over the next couple of years. Now that there are all these you know, penalties on batteries made from China. This is one advantage that Tesla has that I think people probably are not really talking about very much. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. And Tesla has achieved its 50 millionth 4680 battery cell milestone. So they've officially made more than 50 million batteries now. And that's not really that big of a story in and of itself. But what's more interesting is how many batteries they're actually manufacturing today. After reaching 5 million drive units produced at Giga Nevada, the company has now announced it's made 50 million 4680 cells. However, if you look at their timeline, I think that to me is what is much more interesting than the, than the total number of cells made. Here's what Tesla actually said. Congrats, 4680 cell manufacturing team on building their 50 millionth battery cell at Giga Texas. So here are the milestones, guys. In January of 2022, Tesla had made 1 million 4680 cells. So really peanuts, not much at all. In 2023, June of 2023, they had made 10 million. Then in October of 2023, they had made 20 million. And in June 2024, they had made 50 million. So that means then that between October of last year and well now, Tesla has made 30 million battery cells. So it appears that they could potentially be at a run rate today, very likely, in fact, of around 1 million cells per week. That's actually quite a lot of battery cells. If you're wondering how many battery cells are in a Tesla Cybertruck, there is 1,360 batteries in every Cybertruck. 1,360. So that's that's an estimate. I think that's pretty well correct. That was from um, Sandy Munro tearing apart a Cybertruck. Now, back in December of 2023, Reuters, 21st of December, in fact, so not that long ago, uh, Reuters reported that Tesla deliveries are hostage to battery production hell. Now, Tesla appeared to have gotten out of that battery production hell because if they're manufacturing 1 million per week, they might have been making more than that, I think. Then that means that um, they've reached mass production and that's a great that's a great story. Now, has the efficiency or has the actual energy density of these Tesla battery cells, has it reached the level that Tesla are happy with? No, definitely not. Tesla's not at the level they're happy with. They want to improve the energy density significantly and that's clearly what Tesla are working on now, constantly. Now, apparently these, these cells now have do have 10% higher energy density than what they had when they were, when the Tesla Model Y was using 4680 battery cells. That's, that's been stopped now. They don't do that anymore. They obviously use um, Panasonic 2170 cells in the Tesla Model Y, except while well, they used to make the standard range would have LFP, 
But now that those Chinese batteries from Cadle have, you know, obviously those um, extra tariffs on top of them, now Tesla only use the uh, 2170 cells in the Tesla Model Y. I think they may change to 4680s though at some point in time. Now, if you do the numbers, it works. It turns out, obviously, Tesla does produce enough battery cells now to make 1,000 Cybertrucks per week. And Tesla actually reported themselves that in April, they hit that number of 1,000 per week. So that would mean Tesla currently have a run rate of 52,000, the ability to, to manufacture 52,000 Cybertrucks per year, which is nowhere near enough. Now guys, if we actually extrapolate these numbers here and Tesla says that they are manufacturing a thousand Cybertrucks a week, then that would mean Tesla actually does have a run rate of more than 1 million battery cells per week. In fact, they must be producing approximately 1.2 million cells per week at this point in time. Still, like I said, nowhere near enough for the Cybertruck. Now Tesla clearly needs, it needs what? It needs its new battery. And the new battery, my friends, you know, I believe is the Shenseng battery. Now I believe it's the lithium ion phosphate battery, basically version two LFP battery um, that Cadel are going to license that technology to Tesla. Tesla will apparently begin producing those batteries. Now, a lot of people have been reporting that Tesla have leased some new factories in the US in order to set up the production lines. What will apparently happen is Cadel will bring their staff in from China, they'll set up the production lines, and then they'll begin producing batteries and they'll train Tesla staff to use these production lines. And then they will, those, those Chinese staff will leave and go back to China. I don't know how long that'll take. And then what Tesla will do, well, they'll pay a royalty to Cadel, 5%, 10%. I'm not sure what the royalty rates will be, but essentially Cadel will get a, a small kickback from every battery cell, every lithium ion phosphate battery cell that Tesla makes. So what do these batteries do? Well. For one, they can charge at 550 kilowatt, much faster than 4680 battery cells. Now, the actual charging limitation might not just be the batteries, though. It could also be the actual infrastructure of the, you know, obviously the the actual um, engineering of the Cybertruck. But I actually think, if you if you think about it logically, the 800 volt architecture of the Cybertruck should enable this kind of charging speed. So it will be possible potentially. Once Tesla begin using those batteries, they have announced that is actually happening, by the way, not the particular battery type, but we know it's licensing from, from CATL, their batteries. Now, it would not make sense that Tesla would go and license Cadle's what, four-year-old battery technology. The LFP batteries being used in Tesla's today, it's they're basically four years old. Um, it doesn't make sense that Tesla will continue doing that when you know Geely and Zika and other companies in China are using this new Shenseng battery from Cadle. It wouldn't make sense that Tesla would go, oh, let's set up production lines using your really old battery technology. Of course, Tesla is one of the, or Tesla is the, the biggest client for Cadle worldwide for their batteries. So it would make sense that they'd come in and build their new batteries, which are now been being produced for the last, I believe, nine, eight or nine months in China. By the time they come to America, which I believe will be next year, potentially could be this year though, by the way, then you would think they'd be using this new Shenseng battery. Now, the other advantage to these LFP batteries is in the cold. Yes, bigger issues in America than what it is in China. In the cold, these battery packs, they don't lose their energy. They don't lose range. They don't lose their actual um, state of charge. State of charge, even at minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit is the same. It doesn't, isn't, it's not affected. Apparently it only goes down by a couple of percent. It's basically nothing. Big advantage, LFP batteries are known for their problems with actually losing some of their state of charge in extreme cold. So that would be a huge selling point for the Cybertruck in particular. You know, if you live in Chicago, if you live in northern parts of the United States or Canada or wherever it may be, that would be a huge advantage for you. The other advantage is the energy density significantly better than the previous generation lithium ion phosphate batteries. And finally, the other advantage is the price. These batteries would be cheaper for Tesla to manufacture than 4680 battery cells. I know Tesla have the, they, they don't have to pay a middleman to make 4680 battery cells. That's an advantage. It's still gonna be cheaper to manufacture Cadle's LFP cells. The material costs themselves will be cheaper. You just can't get around the fact that lithium ion phosphate batteries are around 30% cheaper than NMC or NMA or whatever category, you know, batteries that use some combination of lithium and nickel, etc they are going to be cheaper. This is what will enable Tesla to provide a cheaper Cybertruck 
and still make a profit, like a you know an eighty thousand um, dollar longer range Cybertruck, rear wheel drive, you know rear wheel drive, rear motor Cybertruck potentially in the future that could be even sixty thousand dollars. Tesla can't do that, I don't think, with these big one hundred and twenty three kilowatt hour forty six eighty cell batteries. Keep in mind. Even Elon Musk said this himself in Tesla's most recent master plan. He said the Cybertruck would have lithium-ion phosphate, a lithium-ion phosphate battery pack. So even he has planned for this actually happening in the future. And this is what Rivian has just done. Rivian has just started using LFP. The industry is going in that direction. Even General Motors are doing it. Ford are doing it now at their, their new factory in Germany. They waited for six months to get cable batteries to use LFP because it's so much cheaper. And because the batteries have no problems, they never have any recalls, and they never have any issues. And they're they're just a better a better choice for most buyers. You can re, you can charge these batteries to 100%. You don't need to worry about um, you know hurting the battery potentially by charging to 80%. Tesla obviously recommend that for 2170s and and 4680s charge to 80%. They recommend that LFP. They don't recommend that. They say charge to 100%. It's no issues. You can do that as much as you want. So this would enable a cheaper cyber truck with probably quite a few advantages. And that's when Tesla can really ramp up production and try not to lose too many of these pre-orders. Now, obviously a lot of people have canceled their pre-orders. It's it's true, we always knew that would happen, but we know that Tesla had more than well over 2 million pre-orders. They need to hold on to a lot of those pre-orders. They wanna do so, and they wanna make 250,000 Cybertrucks next year. How can they do that? They would need to, you know, more than triple their battery manufacturing in order to make 250,000 sub trucks next year. That can't happen unless they have, a, you know, they really need to bring in a, a new supply of batteries to more than triple 4680 battery cell production. It just would not make sense. I don't think Tesla's in a position to do that. So lithium ion phosphate batteries from CATL, Cadle, they are coming. And I personally think that will make the Cybertruck a better vehicle and it will make it cheaper as well. Thanks for watching.